Hello, I'm George from Panoceres Yacht Charters and today we're going to show you our Beneteau 51.1 Saltwater. This yacht has a layout of 5 cabins plus 3 heads and the skipper's cabin. Before we proceed with the technical presentation of the yacht, let's have a quick look at the living spaces of the yacht. First of all, let's start with the master switches of the yacht. The master switches are located under the right side of the couch. This switch is the master switch of the yacht. This switch is for the engine and this for the service batteries. This yellow fuse is the thermical fuse of the anchor winch. If you apply too much pressure on the anchor winch, this fuse may trip. Under the couch right here, we have some thermical fuses. This thermical fuse is for the folding platform and this for the electric winch. If you put too much pressure on the platform or the electric winch, these thermical fuses may trip. If you want to disable them, you can close these thermical fuses from here. Under the beds of the front cabins, we have the bow thruster with its battery and its fuse. This place needs to be free from luggage in order to avoid any kind of problem with the bow thruster. About the toilets. First of all, to avoid any kind of blockage, you should avoid throwing anything inside the bowl. To operate the toilet, if you want to flush out while at the same time flushing in seawater, you need to turn the switch to the left and use the pump. If you only want to flush out, you turn the switch to the right and use the pump again. The lights are operated through this button and there is empty space to store your things behind here. If you want to make sour, you need to open this wall here. The sour drain is automatic, but you can also use this button right here to use it manually. All the toilets of this yacht are equipped with a waste tank. The waste tank valve is located outside of each toilet under the floor. This red valve is for the waste tank. In this position, the waste tank is open. If you want to use the waste tank, you need to turn the valve to the right. If you want to empty the waste tank, you need to turn the valve to its previous position. Behind the couch here, we have some switches. The first switch here, the first two, are for the AC outlets. This is for the battery charger, here for the boiler, and this for for the three air conditioned units. About the boiler, if you want to have hot water through the shore power cable or when the generator is running, you need to open this switch right here, wait half an hour for the water to warm up, then close the switch and then make your sour. Otherwise, while you have the engine running, you have automatically hot water 
through the cooling system of the engine. Here we have the breakers for the inverter. This is the display for the solar panel and the switch for the solar panel. Under the left side of the couch we have the manuals of the boat, the freshwater pump and the freshwater tank selectors. Here you can see where the freshwater tanks are located. The selectors are inside here. For the moment tank number 3 is currently in use. Tank number 1 and tank number 2 are closed. To switch between the three freshwater tanks you need first to close the freshwater pump from the panel which I will show you later in the video then switch to either the first one or the second freshwater tank then open again the freshwater pump and finally you need to open one tap to take the air out of the system you need to operate only one freshwater tank at a time under here we have all the safety lines the inflatable life jackets inside here we have the first aid kit flares of the boat toolbox, Boson's chair, dinghy repair kit and sales repair kit. Inside the chart table we have the Greek waters pilot, keys of the boat, mirror signals, hand bearing compass, divider and parallel ruler. The maps are inside here together with the list of lights, the binoculars and the cockpit light. The interior plotter is located here. It's fully touched zoom in and zoom out from here all the details are here and the power button is here next to the chart table we have the electrical panel this switch is for the instruments of the yacht this is for the navigation lights steaming light deck light and anchor light interior lights bilge pump if you press it once it's auto if you press it twice it's manual this is a spare line, fresh water pump and fridge units. Next we have the radio which you can also operate it through Bluetooth. Here on this display you can see the water levels and the diesel tank levels and also battery levels for service batteries and engine battery. This is the controller of the generator and this is the controller for the inverter. About the inverter, when you have the generator switched off and you are not connected to the shore power, you can supply the yacht with 220 volts using the inverter. To switch it on, you just press this button once. To switch it off, you press it once again. When you are using the inverter, you need to make sure that the power consumption is not too high. Otherwise, you run the risk of draining the service batteries. We recommend that you use the inverter when the engine is running. About the generator. Before you start the generator, you need to make sure that the two switches under the chart table are switched off. Now, to start the generator, you need to press the start button continuously till the green light on top becomes stable. Before you open the switch under the chart table, you need to wait a few seconds for the generator to reach peak power. Before you switch off the generator, you need to make sure that all electronic devices that run on generator power and especially their condition units have been switched off. Then you need to close the switch under the chart table and finally you can switch off the generator by pressing the stop button for a few seconds. Here are the two switches to select between shore power and generator power. These two switches are off now. If you want to use shore power, you open the switch here. After you have waited for a few seconds, you can start all the electronic devices. To close the shore power, first of all, you need to close all the electronic devices that run on shore power and especially their condition units and then you can close the switch. If you want to use generator power, 
you need to move the slider to the left and after you have started the generator you can open the switch. When you are using shore power or generator power you will be able to see the voltage from this display. This yacht is equipped with three air condition units, one for the stern cabins, one for the saloon area and one for the bow cabins. When you start the air condition, you need to make sure that water is coming out from the right side of the hull. To start the air condition, you just press this button once and you wait for the air condition to start. You can adjust the temperature from here. The air condition will select on its own whether to heat or cold. You can adjust also the fan from here. To switch off, press this once. The air condition units can be operated with the shore power or with a generator, but there is high chance that the shore power is not enough to operate all three units, so we strongly recommend to use the generator for running the air conditions. The VHF is located on the right side of the chart table. To switch it on, you press this button. The charger for the battery of the VHF is located inside here. After the VHF has switched on, you can change the channels from here, volume from here, push to talk, distress button here. To switch it off, you press this button again. If you run low on service batteries, there is a high chance that you will hear an alarm coming from this device. In order to stop the alarm, you need to press the reset button and then you will need to charge your service batteries. Inside these lockers, we can find the cups, the plates and the glasses. Inside here we have the cutleries and under there all the cooking pans. This is a foot pump which runs on seawater and the valve is located under here. Inside here we have the gas valve. This yacht has two fridge units, one here and one here. Both fridge units have this regulator to adjust the temperature. To close the lid on this one, you need to take out the pin, hold the top cover and gently close it. To start the stoves, for the left one, we press this button inside and we turn to the left. Then use a lighter. You need to keep this pressed for a few seconds in order for the stove to heat up. Then you can release it and adjust the power. The same applies to the right one. To switch them off, just bring the button to the middle. You can lock and unlock the door of the oven from here and the tilt from here. To start the oven, press this button inside, turn to the left, light it up and wait a few seconds again for the oven to heat up. To switch it off, bring it to the middle. Here we have the engine room. This yacht has a 110 horsepower Yanmar engine with straight shaft drive and fixed blades propeller. The consumption of this engine is about 7.5 liters per hour at 2200 RPM. When the engine is cold, you can check the oil level from the dipstick on the left and the cooling water from this plastic box. This yacht has two diesel tanks, one for the engine and the other one for the generator. In case the tank that it's used for the engine runs low, you can pull this lever right here to switch to the other tank. Now let's continue with the outside of the yacht. So let's start with the lockers. On this locker right here, we have some spare ropes, the swimming ladder and the second anchor with 20 meters of chain. On the other side, We have the two fire extinguishers, the electricity cable, a plastic bucket, foot pump for the dinghy and 5 liters of unleaded fuel for the outboard. 
Inside this compartment here, we have the life raft. On the big locker here, we have the water hose, a second horse to pedal, some spare ropes, and two lines of 50 meter floating line for anchoring. Under the floor here, we have the one filling point for the one diesel tank. Inside here, we have the generator, the emergency tiller, and 20 liters of spare diesel in case of emergency. To further continue, inside here we have the two gas bottles, and second filling point for the diesel tank is right here. When sailing, the gangway should be closed like this, and we also recommend to use a small rope to firmly attach the gangway to the rail. To open the gangway, first of all, take control of the halyard, release the rope from the breaker, give a gentle push to the lower part of the gangway, while at the same time pulling out the halyard. When in halfway, give a gentle push to the platform, and then adjust the height till the gangway is 20 meters higher from the dock. Once in place, put the rope to the breaker and always make at least two safety knots over the breaker for security. Here we have the switch for the cockpit lights. These two buttons control the platform. Before you operate the platform, make sure that the yacht is stationary and the fenders are out of the way. To open the platform, first of all, take the safety pin out to release the platform. Then you need to press the down button. When the platform is deployed, no more than two people should be standing on it. Of course, jumping is not allowed due to safety reasons. To take the platform up, just press the up button. When the platform is fully closed, don't forget to put the safety pin back in place to secure it. About the navigational instruments, this yacht has two multifunctional displays, one for its helm, and it's right here. It shows information about the wind, the speed of the yacht, and the depth. Here we have the GPS plotter. It also has the same information. The depth is measuring from the physical location of the sensor, which is under the hull. The draft of this yacht is 2 meters and 35 centimeters. You can use the GPS plotter either with a touch screen or with the buttons. Here we have the controller for the autopilot. After you have set your course, you press the auto button to engage the autopilot. You will see also a red light here. Plus 1 degree, minus 1 degree, plus 10, minus 10. Stand by to free the helm again. Now let's start the engine. To start the engine, first of all, you need to switch on by pressing this button. Then you will need to wait a few seconds for the lights to go off. Now we press the start button. After you have started the engine, you need to make sure that water is coming from the left side of the hull. To go neutral, you need to press this red button and open the throttle. 1200 RPM is enough to charge your batteries. If you bring the lever back to the middle, the pin goes out. To go forward, first block the gear and then open the throttle. For reverse, you will need to wait a few seconds for the revs to go down. Then first block the gear and then open the throttle. Now that we have the engine running, we can start the bow thruster. To switch it on, I need to press both buttons at the same time. To go right, 
to go left. To switch off, I will need to press both buttons again. The bow thruster will operate it no more than 10 seconds continuously. You need to operate it 10 seconds, make a small pause, then use it again. And always while the engine is running. Now to stop the engine. To stop the engine, we press the stop button. And after the engine has stopped, you need to press the switch off button for 4 seconds till all the lights go on and off. When sailing, the gear must always be in neutral position. The filling point for the three water tanks are one on the left side, one in the bow, and one on the right side. About the anchor winch, this yacht is equipped with 80 meters of chain and in the end there is a security rope. To take the anchor down, you take the controller from here and you press the down button. For the first few meters you need to go slow. To go up, you press the up button, but you have to be careful in the last few meters to go slow so that the anchor doesn't hit the hull. When the anchor is fully up, the chain must not be too tight. Also, when taking the chain up, the chain needs to be vertical to the surface of the water so that the anchor winch doesn't stress too much. Before you open the sails, please make sure that all the top hatches remain shut in order to avoid any kind of damage caused to them by the Genoa seats. Also, to avoid incoming seawater. Both the main sail and the Genoa are roller and can be operated from the two helm stations. On the left side, we also have an electric winch with two speeds, fast and slow. About the outboard, this yacht has a 4 horsepower outboard engine. It's 4 stroke, so it doesn't need any oil. To operate the outboard, it must be attached to the dinghy inside the water. To start it, you need first to open the fuel from the right side, and then open the air vent on the top. Then you need to bring the throttle to start position. If the outboard is cold, you need to pull the choke out. To start, you need to pull the rope out gently till you find resistance and then you need to pull it harder. After the outboard has started, you need to close the choke. This outboard is capable to go also reverse. To stop the outboard, you need to press this button and then close the air vent on the top and the fuel from the side. From all the Panoseris Yacht Charter team, thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to answer them. Let us know how you feel about our video in our social pages. We are looking forward into welcoming you on board.